new wall. And a new year for monster trucks on tough tracks. for the 1990 World Championship on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge begins in the Charleston Civic Center, and you're going to enjoy all the action right here on Tough Tracks. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas. Army Armstrong's brand new year equalizer, who is going to be defending his World Championship, is not here this week in Charleston. He's racing at another TNT event. We'll see some highlights. But here in Charleston, we're going to be showing the fans a lot of guys that we have questions about for 1990. Well, this is the time a lot of guys roll out and lay those cards on the table. And what we're going to be looking at is a new outlaw truck Call him the Jersey Outlaw. He changed the name to Outlaw. That's Mike Wine with the Ford Camp. And he believes he can take Ford to the first national championship or world championship win in 1990. The grave digger, Dennis Anderson, is going to have nothing to do with it. He wants to put everybody away. Had a great start in 89, then it went away on him. Anderson said he's found the handle. He's going to be tough all year long. Then you got Marvin Smith in the wild hair. Brand new truck, brand new everything. He said, I've changed my name, I've changed my luck. I'm going to be a player this year. So, Scott, it's going to be kicking off big in 90 starts right now. Certainly one of the big stories we've got to watch, Army, is the 1988 World Champion. USA won. Late in the year, Steve Wilkie took over for Rod Litzow, but now Wilkie becoming a more experienced driver. Can he return that truck to the form of old? That seems to be the big question. We get a lot of people all over the country want to know, when is Wilkie going to turn the USA one around? When is Wilkie going to be able to drive that truck like Rod Litzow drove? Well, believe me, Wilkie believes in himself. Ever Jasmine believes in Wilkie. It's just a question of time. Thanks, Army. Now let's go to Chris Chapman. She's inside the Charleston Civic Center. Chris has got more on today's Monster Truck Racing program. As the 1990 season gets into full swing here in Charleston, West Virginia, you need to keep one thing in mind. Monster truck drivers want to win this silver flag. Why? Well, because if you see a truck out there sporting the silver flag on his rear bumper, that means that he's the previous week's winner, and it also means that he's gaining the maximum points needed to become the 1990 world champion on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. One truck that's sure to battle for that title is the Jersey Outlaw. A little later on in the show, we'll let you meet his driver, Mike Wine. And from what I understand, he has his sights set on the number one spot for 1990. It's time to take a look at the debut of that brand new Outlaw truck and the new Grave Digger for 1990. There's Mike Wine, Pensacola, New Jersey, the Ford, the Jersey Outlaw. This will be a qualifying run along with the Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson. Brand new home shop for Dennis Anderson. I love the name, Army. Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. Well, if you're driving a monster truck that goes by the name of the Grave Digger, I guess that's where you're going to be from. You know, he rolls into the lines against his Ford, and you cannot underestimate the outlaw Ford. Not just a new dress, this is a whole new truck, and Mike Wine really believes in this vehicle this year, Scott. Qualifying run. Oh, both trucks getting down there. Very, very close, and you can see shutdown's kind of tight. Under five seconds on both trucks, Scott. Indeed, just seven hundredths separating them. Grave Digger, though, with the faster time. Outlaw, though, should be very high up on the list. Lots of Grave Digger fans in Charleston, West Virginia, as they are everywhere. The Pony Express coming out onto the track right now. Anthony Fortier out of Bloomfield, New Jersey. This is an interesting, well, not really a truck. It's more of a car body sitting on the truck frame. The 68 Ford Mustang body, and believe me, in 1968, if you were in motorsports, you knew about this body style. Made a whole lot of horsepower and drag strips all over the country. This young man's converted it over to make a monster vehicle with it, and he's a strong player going against the Star Monster out of New York. Very, very close again and laying under qualifying runs. A lot of smoke. Star Monster looks like he's got some problems. Pony Express was 300s quicker, but you can see both their times considerably slower than those posted earlier by Grave Digger and Outlaw. Yeah, but Scott, slow in this port is six seconds on these tracks. That's still quick. Out of Syracuse, New York, Chris Tuffley's got some problems, and we'll be seeing if he's going to be able to run at full strength later. We talked about him in the opening segment. Steve Wilkie, maybe as much pressure on him as any driver in the sport. 
taking over USA One full-time this year. And John Kwasniewski and the Buffalo Tremor. Army, I know you like Johnny K's chances in 1990. I really do, and I'll tell you why. You're looking at two extremes in the driver. Steve Wilkie, high strung, always on a razor's edge. Meanwhile, Johnny K, this kid is from the 60s, in my opinion. Laid back, easy going, and he'll go for you in a heartbeat. Look at this. We just learned something on that run. The hill, the bounce you take coming off that hill can pay dividends. Wilkie proves it. Look at this, a 4.75. That should put him up in the elite in qualifying at the Charleston Civic Center. We're going to watch it again. USA 1 isolated here on Steve Wilkie, Army. Watch the front wheels. They don't kick up. See, they just ease right over the set, the set of cars. Man, he's making a smooth run out of it. They do not worry about the hill. They're jumping it already in qualifying, Scott. When we return, we'll be coming at you with more qualifying. Tough Tracks is brought to you by Micro Machines, the most colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machine, it's not the real thing. From the Charleston Civic Center, Charleston, West Virginia, I'm Scott Douglas with Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman. The first points race of 1990 on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge is coming your way today on Tough Tracks. Kid Rary brings out the Thunder Chicken from Catawissa, Pennsylvania. This will be a qualifying run, but he'll line up against a guy a lot of people are excited about watching in 1990. You mentioned him in the opening, Army. Marvin Smith says it's a brand new year and it's a brand new me. He's changed his name. He's changed the way his truck looks. The wild hair is something else. He's also changed his whole attitude. There's just a, a difference about him, a confidence that was not there. At the beginning of last year, we started to see that confidence coming around at the end of the year. As a matter of fact, in Atlanta, when he made some changes in the transmission, and the truck really started going. Speaking of going, this thunder checking comes from out of nowhere. Ken Rarey, a strong charger out of the Northeast. Time to beat is 4.59, set down by the Grave Digger. Good runs there. Both of these, everybody is dialed in. This year, look here. 509 and a 4.56. That's fast time. Marvin Smith has laid it down in the wild hair. That's the new, the new Marvin Smith we were talking about. Not only new paint, but a new philosophy and new found horsepower. And he has laid down the fast time. Marvin Smith is the man to beat in the wild hair, doing the wild thing in Charleston. Bob Fisher brings out the liquidator Ford, a new truck for us to look at. He'll match qualifying times right now with Bennett Clark and the very popular Clydesdale Chevrolet. Well, Clark rolls out with the Clydesdale Chevrolet, the long wheelbase truck. We told you about him last year. I'm not sure that that theory is working for Bennett. Meanwhile, the Ford we're going to be looking at, the liquidator, has to be one of the cleanest trucks, the most well-constructed trucks I've seen on the circuit. He's not able to run that much with us. When we do get a chance to go with this young man, he's a good, strong runner. So it's going to be the old Chevrolet versus Ford. Let's see who's going to win this qualifying round. Remember, your quick time, sub five seconds by the wild Heron Marvin Smith. 4.56, the time to beat. Oh, Bennett Clark looking good now. Good run for Dale. I don't think it's enough to get fast time, but he's going to be up near the top as we get a look isolated on Clydesdale. Good run. Yeah, what I'm noticing is if you don't take a lot of lift when you hit the cars, you're going to be tough tonight. 4.72 is an excellent time yeah, for good. Clydesdale. That ought to put him in the top five. Matter of fact, it's fourth best right now. Remember, this qualifying is important, and the reason it's important, the quick half of the field runs the slower half of the field. Now, speaking of quick half, if you'll remember last year at the Houston Astrodome, this young man in the nightlife was the quickest of the quick. He ended up beating a guy by the name of Bigfoot in that championship round at Houston, Dave Weissork in nightlife. Right now, he goes up against the Dodge at Mopar Magic, Gary Wiggins. There's Weissork. Good look at him. And Army, you talked about it so often, hanging that head and arm out the window. Weissork, ready to lay down a qualifying shot. He has his own unique driving style, but watch the Dodge. The Mopar Magic swore to me. We're looking at a new truck. Let's see what it's going to be like. Yeah. Oh, big time. Look at here, Scott. Impressive. Gary Wiggins, Mopar Magic, a full length better than Dave Wysorek's nightlife. Look at the time. 4.92 for Mopar. That'll be sixth best in the qualifying round. Now, all the trucks are going to be coming back. Here's the way they'll pair up. Wild hair, fast qualifier, Marvin Smith. He'll meet Thunder Chicken. Steve Wilkie, USA, one against Star Monster. Then it's the outlaw, third best in qualifying, to take on the new kid, the Pony Express. Moving on through the first round, we'll be taking a look at the Clydesdale Chevrolet against none.
nightlife. A couple of old rivals going head to head in that one. And then rounding out the opening round of competition, the dive. Mopar Magic against Buffalo Tremor and Gravedigger. Second fastest qualifier comes out against the Liquidator. Be watching for TMT Motorsports on tour. The Major League coming to the Houston Astrodome. February 9th and 10th, the superstars are pulling and the monster trucks in the dome. February 9th and 10th. Saturday, February 10th at the new Charlotte Coliseum. All the superstars are pulling will be in Charlotte. The monster trucks, February 9th and 10th, will be in Huntsville, Alabama at the Von Braun Civic Center. And coming up, the National Farm Machinery Show, the granddaddy of them all. February 14th to the 17th in Louisville. The monsters go to Roanoke, Virginia. February 16th through the 18th. And then the Monsters are coming to Biloxi, Mississippi. The Mississippi Coast Coliseum, February 16th and 17th. The Major League coming at you. Watch for TNT Motorsports. Back with the superstars of Monster Truck Racing as 1990 begins in the Charleston Civic Center, Charleston, West Virginia. And here's the guy making the noise in race number one. Wild hair, Marvin Smith, the new paint job, the new name, looking like he just stepped off a music video. I'll tell you what, though, he has made some noise tonight, setting down the fast qualifying shot. His opponent in this first matchup of 1990 will be the Thunder Chicken and Kid Rarick. Marvin Smith sets on top of a 456. He says, if you're going to beat me, you better take it to the wall. They go to the starting line right now, side by side. Kid Rearing the sleeper during all 1989. Can he do it again? Marvin Smith says no. He's going to run me. He's going to run me all the way to the end of the building. The pressure building, Scott. Here we go. First run of 1990. Who's going to be the first winner? Wild hair. Marvin Smith on his first run beaten by Thunder Chicken, but his problems were at the shutdown. Look at this as he has come through the wall at the Charleston Civic Center. Oh, my. Marvin's okay. The truck, he takes a killer box out. They've got concrete blocks up there in front. He just didn't get it shut out in time. That shows you the intensity of this race, man. It's no game. These guys are here to win. They're pushing it to the limit. I told you a minute ago, he said, if you're going to beat me, you got to go to the wall. There's the wall. Wow, well, I'll tell you, you know, the Renegades point fund has been increased to $150,000 for this year. Marvin Smith shows you they're going all out every time to get their share of it. Looks like as we're getting, it looks like, um, what, not, not a lot shock? of damage. Yeah, the word we're getting is not a lot of damage to the trucks, Scott. That's about it. A broken shock, they're telling us, and really not much else uh, for Marvin Smith. And we understand he thinks he'll be back. Watch the bounce. This is what's going to get you on these short indoor tracks. Now, see, all the wheels are off the ground right now. Now they sit down. They're off the ground, on the ground. He's in trouble right now. You can't stop him when you're bouncing in the air, Scott. Boy, and there you can see him bang into the wall at the Charleston Civic Center as Wildair leaves his impression in Charleston. Headed back to the pits, and again, Marvin says he thinks that only the shock is broke. You can see the bumper hanging off, but that's superficial. I think the Wild Air's going to be back. The question is now, how long is it going to take to repair the damage inside of the Charleston Civic Center to go back race? Well, the tractor's getting squared away. Let's check with Marvin now. Marvin, not a very fun way to start 1990. You know, Chris, I thought... I kind of enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't enjoy the ride, but at least, like, like I said, when we came out, we came out to put on the show, that's what we're here for, that's what we're going to do. Look at that bounce. One more time. Watch the bounce. See, in the air, down, bounce again. Guarantee you, Scott, the rest of the drivers were watching that bounce. Boy, he, did. he kicked and just went smack hard into the wall as the work will continue to get that shock ready. You know, Wild Hair did get beat, but this is a 12-truck race. What that means, Army, is several fast losers, two of them to be exact, will be coming back in the quarterfinal round. And Marvin laid down a good shot. He may come back, so he's got to keep working as if he'll get a call. Uh, right now, he's outside. The word we get is he's going just like he is coming back. Star Monster, youngest driver on the circuit, 19 years old. Who's he go up again? Red, white, and blue. True value, hard way. USA one of Steve Wilkie. Easy win for USA one. Wilkie got him out of the hole and took the Star Monster all the way. 
You know, Wilkie seems to be more confident every week we yeah. watch him. You know, he's got big shoes to fill. Rod Litzow has flat laid down a reputation in a couple of years of competition. Wilkie has a lot to live up to, but he gets better every week out. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. He's got what it takes. It's just a question of getting it dialed in. He's also really got that cocky attitude that USA 1 had with Litzow and now has with Wilkie. Either love him or you love to hate him. Army's got him now. Well, Steve Wilkie is one driver that's always been an excitable individual. You're just about as excited as I've ever seen you, son. Well, the adrenaline gets pumping, Army. The next round's coming up. Are you going to be a player for this thing? A lot of people say, I don't know if he can drive it or not. I know he can tune it. Can you drive this truck to a win? Three words. It's on the floor. Steve Wilkie, and there's the familiar USA one throwing that finger in the air. I'll tell you, he tends to come after him here in 1990. Tough competition, though, in Charleston. We'll see what he's got as the rounds go on. He was certainly impressive in that first win. But you know, Scott, if you're going to drive a monster truck, you better believe in yourself. I guarantee you. All right, speaking of believing in yourself, the long wheelbase, Bennett Clark said that was the way to go. He comes up against one of the shortest wheelbase trucks on the tour. Hey, you call that one. I can't wow. tell. Wow, they cross side by side, Clydesdale and Nightlight. Man, they're really going to have to examine the videotape on this one. Let's see if we can tell on our replay. Now, the, the truck furthest away right there has a long wheelbase, and he goes up against a short wheelbase. What? I can't tell. They're calling the victory for your winner, the Clydesdale. Bennett, a close race between you and uh, Wyzorek. What do you think about coming back against the fast loser? Well, the truck's running real good right now. I guess... Uh, I guess he'll, uh, he'll just have to bait me tonight. Uh, did a lot of work on the suspension. The truck's sitting on the ground when I come over the hill. It's going to be a tough race, whoever it is. Strong, but I feel like the butterflies are still churning. It's race number one. It's a new season. Everybody's excited, and you know, the slate's clean. Nobody's trying to make up a point deficit. Somebody's trying to get a lead here in Charleston, and this guy in this Dodge, Gary Wiggins of Mopar Magic, thinks he can come out of here with the points lead. He definitely believes he can, and, and we were talking earlier, and he says, no doubt in my mind, it's a new, he's just like Marvin Smith. He's coming in here, not only with a new truck, but with a new, cleared mind. He believes in that Dodge. He's got to get past this kid out of New York, and that's going to be one tough armor to get by in this first round. Buffalo Tremor, John Wozniewski, and Army, you have really documented over, I guess, the last six months, the real emergence of Johnny K. It, you, can, you can feel it. You can watch him. Every time he sets in that truck, he gets better. He took two wins in 1989. He would sure love to start off 1990 with a win. The most powerful man he does, I'm going to hand it to him. Ah! Put Chevrolet away. Gary Wiggins, Williamston, North Carolina, starts off with a big victory as he beats a guy who probably would have had to have been favored coming into the race, even though Mopar qualified quicker. He backed it up. Full three-quarter length win. Yeah, that was a good win for the Dodge. This guy's serious. You see him, you see him looking. You know what they're looking for? They know liquidators out there. They're looking for the other guy. That's the grave digger. Dennis Anderson, now out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And man, you know, the most popular monster truck said the one thing he lacked in 1989 was enough wins. Every time out, he thinks he can win in 1990. Watch the hill. Anderson told me, he says, we used to worry about driving over the hill. He said, I'm going to fly over it. Whoa, he does just that. And fly he does. we got to remember the engine in the grave to the rear. He drives that truck different than anybody. Now, punch and go. Fly over the hump, get over the cars, and go into the second round. Getting them roaring in Charleston already. Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger starts 1990 with a win in his first race as he puts Liquidator on the trailer. Well, Dennis Anderson, 1989, a lot of people saying there's a lot of talk. This is 1990. Can you do it this year? Yeah, I think so, Army. I've, uh, you know, we're starting out with the old truck. I've got a new one coming out. We're going to do a, a truck change in the middle of the season here. We put a small motor in the truck, and it's been working well. We were in Canada last week, and it worked real good with us. And I think I'm going to do it this year. We understand you just got quick time of the night. 
442. We'll let you get back to the pit area. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what he was talking about, the rules will allow you to make one change in the truck. He's going to physically change truck. He's going to get some points with this truck. When the new truck's done, he's going to dial in on the new one for 1990. He says it's going to be the year for him. Let's watch him and find out. The Outlaw is at the starting line, but the Pony Express can't get there to join him because of steering problems, so Mike Wine gets a bye run. Let's go to the floor now with Chris Chapman as Chris has quarterfinal round pairings. Chris, what do they look like? We had some interesting competition in our first round action. Let's see if quarterfinal action goes the same. Our first matchup places the Thunder Chicken and Ken Rarick against USA 1 and Steve Wilkie. Then we bring our second fast loser, the Nightlife and Dave Wise Work, up against Jersey Outlaw. And then it's going to be Wild Hair and Marvin Smith after knocking the wall down. They're going to come back as the fast loser and face the Clydesdale. And rounding out our quarterfinal competition is going to be Mopar Magic and the Grave Digger, a crowd favorite here in Charleston, West Virginia. Thanks, Chris. That's coming up. But right now, it's time for the Crunch of the Week. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week. Brought to you by Micro Machines. The number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. This week's crunch of the week, Army, may seem like a little deja vu. It was a year ago in Chicago. Rod Litzow and USA One said, hello, wall. Boy, that one scared everybody right there. The USA One taking out the wall in Chicago, and it's kind of appropriate with Wild Hair hitting the wall tonight in Charleston. Here's the replay, and watch him go in and take out a lot of brickage in Chicago. What happened? The front axles were broken on the truck when he tagged the brakes. They were just not there. The rear wheel turning backwards. See, the front wheel still going forward. Bam! Right into that wall. Rod Litzow and USA One really crunching her on the crunch of the week. Stay tuned, the quarterfinals will be coming up next here on Tough Tracks. From the Welcome back for the quarterfinal round of Monster Truck Racing, TNT style. The Major League getting ready to go in the round of eight. Steve Wilkie, the True Value USA 1, will take on Thunder Chicken. So let's just take a minute. Earlier, Army talked to Wilkie about filling the shoes of 88 World Champion Rod Litzow. Here are Steve's thoughts on the matter. Steve Wilkie, as driver of the one, you jumped up and took over some pretty big shoes. A lot of the spectators around the country are asking us just a point-blank question. When is Steve Wilkie going to be able to drive the truck like Rod Litzow drove it? Well, I mean, it's a, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, Rod undoubtedly is one of the best in the country at it. Uh, the major thing is time in the seat. Uh, it's an unnatural act to take a six-ton truck and point it at a wall, uh, much like, you know, a stack of cars even. Uh, I've been doing exhibition for two years. Uh, Everett's got confidence in me to, to drive the trucks and, and not be aware of breaking the trucks. You've got to go out there and just hit, po literally pound on it. Uh, in doing exhibition, I don't use any ramps, so there's a lot more physical stress on the truck uh, and also me. It's just a matter of being in the seat and getting the feel of the truck in an indoor event like this. Outdoors, it's a little easier. These guys that we run against, they're the best in the country. And, and uh, you know, for me to jump into the seat and try and beat some of these guys, uh, you know, it's just got to come from within. Do you have any doubt that it will come? Oh, uh, not at all. Uh, we got some of the best equipment in the country. You know, we've proved that. Uh, we've been upside down several times, as you know. And uh, we come back the next day or the next week to, to win the event. Uh, we try to preserve the truck, but we'll win at all costs. And, uh, that's the whole point, that everybody's out here to win. Boy, well, USA 1 has struggled at times, has been great at times, and right now it looks like problems. They're trying to get transmission fluid into USA 1 as he tries to go against Thunder Chicken in the quarterfinal round. And Army, this is something that's been recurring since really late last year and early into this year, transmission troubles for USA 1. Yeah, and, and here's what's happening right here. I told you earlier about Wilkie. He's kind of high strung. He, he is normally the man putting the transmission fluid in. He's very impatient. We're well, looking at it with his crew. He knows what it takes to get the job done. He knows how to do it. He just can't do it. He's trapped into the truck in the driver's compartment. The transmission problem is a result of starting these trucks right on a hill. You notice the heat coming out? Wilkie may have made a... Well, he is real, he's got a lot of problems right now. I don't think he's going to make the call. 
He is basically in position to get to the starting but, line, hey, but he's not, not on the starting yeah, line. And something else, Wilkie had lane choice. He's 36 hundredths of a second quicker than Thunder Chicken and goes into a lane that he's not familiar with. I don't understand why he's doing this. Wilkie has it running, however, and is pulling to the starting line to go up against the Thunder Chicken. Now, the telltale sign, will the truck move? If the transmission's gone away, he's going to sit there. There's nothing happening right now. Smoke coming from USA 1. Wilkie, uh, he's, he's taking off the helmet. He must be done. He slams it down. Hey, you know, we don't need to say another word. That look on Wilkie's face when he buried his head, that's it. Well, that is a long roll to hole right there. I wonder what's going through his mind, Scott. Utter disgust. I guarantee it. Wilkie, you, you just talk to him. I mean, you, you, he really put in his own words how competitive, how intense he is, how badly he wants to get everybody to quit talking about Ron Litzow yeah. and talk about Steve Wilkie. Talk about me. And now well, he's you know, fired it back up here. Yeah, he, what it is, if the engine cools down, the transmission cools down, it'll pull itself. You can, he's feeling it. See, the truck has a tendency to want to move. He will not be able to make the race. What they're doing, the TNT officials are going and picking the third quick loser. Oh, we've got a little bit of a problem. The torque converter, a little fire in the torque converter is what happened there. A little bit of liquid got out on the hot exhaust. Wilkie immediately, he comes out of the truck now. USA 1 will not be able to go, and Thunder Chicken's going to have to race. I mean, let's clarify what's happened here. USA 1 was there, but according to Tracy Smart, the starter, he was not actually at the starting line. He did not get to the starting line and get a thumbs up. So they're going to bring Buffalo Tremor in here to race Thunder Chicken. Okay, the reason they do that in TNT Motorsports, you see a replay with the torque converter fire. After the first round, there are no buy runs and elimination. People see side-by-side -side racing after the first round. Thus, the kid out of New York gets a break. Kid out of uh, Northeast Minnesota goes out on a hook. Boy, that's tough. This could be the start of a long year for those boys. So the five-minute rule coming into effect, I'm sure Kid Raring and Thunder Chicken not wild about it because he was there and ready to go, but technically USA 1 just did not answer the call even though he was out there close to the starting line. He was never officially staged to start. So now Chicken's going to have to beat Buffalo Tremor, and as you just talked about, this could be a great reprieve for the kid out of Buffalo, New York. Definitely, and remember, the man that makes that call is a starter. When he says he was not in the starting mode, that's it. That's that is the gospel in this sport. If Thunder would, Chicken works up against the New York truck. Now, this is going to be a good race. I guarantee you, both of these guys know they got a break to be sitting on this starting line, Scott. All right. Now you see Thunder Chicken is tightened up, and he'll give a thumbs up. Then the green light goes. We have a race. Look at Thunder Chicken. Check this out. All right. USA 1, Buffalo Trevor. I don't care who you put up there. The chicken says... We're going to the hen house for this one, baby. He takes the win over the Buffalo Tremor. Chris Chapman has caught up with Steve Wilson. Steve, how do you feel? You get all the way to the line, and then a torque converter blows, and, and you're out. I, this is TV, Chris. I can't. Um, <laughs> of course, it's disheartening. We, we were strong. Uh, you know, we'll be back tomorrow. But uh, it, it's a sport. It's, that's all I can say, really. Now, you're a little concerned that you got to the line and then you were pulled off the line. What, tell me about that. Well, the rules say you have to bring the truck to the line, okay? And if you read between the lines, that means the light has to go green. Uh, the light didn't go green. I, I couldn't move. I, we dumped tranny fluid in it and tried several things, and I couldn't move. So I feel they're going to take the round money and, you know, whatever goes along with the uh, the light going green, so to speak. Could be very big in a close points race because, indeed, that cost him three points he would have got for starting the race. Not a good start in the world points race for USA 1. When we come back, the wild hair returns. He'll be racing in the quarterfinals after that first round encounter with the wall. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the excitement and the sensational power of the superstars in monster truck racing on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Our next quarterfinal race will send the Clydesdale up against that man right there, one of the stories early on in 1990, Marvin Smith's wild hair. 
Now, those of you who've been following the sport here on Tough Tracks know that last year, Marvin Smith drove Stomper and Bob Breen drove the Wild Hair. But the Breens are involved with the new Micro Machine, a truck called the Micro Machine, driven by John Breen, will be coming out. So Marvin went with the Wild Hair. Well, we're seeing a new Marvin Smith in more ways than one. A new truck and a new attitude. Marvin, let's talk about the attitude at the end of 89 said you were tired of losing, you were going to make some changes. It looks like the changes are putting you in the right direction. Yes, Army, that, that's exactly right. Uh, at the end of last year, that, that's what I said, and that's what we meant to do. Uh, we come out with an all-new truck, an all-new name. We lighted it, did suspension changes, and we're out here to win. Let's talk about the new truck. First of all, the name, you brought that out, Wild Hair. The Breen Boys out of Missouri used to run the name Wild Hair. Now you come over to it. This is the third name that you've run as a professional monster truck. Tell us why. Okay, well, as, as a lot of people know, I started out with a truck called the Crimson Giant, which will always be the only dear one in my heart, because I started with that one. Uh, but then, uh, then along came Stomper and, and uh, a, ch a chance to get a, a uh, sponsorship through Tyco Toy and TNT Sports, which I thought was a good deal, and I, and I, I took it. Uh, now we're moving on to different things, and uh, we, we want a new image. And Stomper was a nice truck, but it was just a little bit, I felt like it was outdated, and so we want to come back, with, like I said, with a new image and everything rocking and rolling, so that's why we came out with Wild Hair. Uh, the Wild Hair used to be owned by the Breen Boys out of uh, Jefferson City, Missouri, the name, the name Wild Hair. And, but we worked out a deal where I took over the name and didn't take it over, you know, through negotiations, came up, you know, started using the name Wild Hair. Well, the crowd really seems to get behind you with that name. They love the truck. The paint scheme on the truck really looks great. Let's talk specifically about the truck. I understand you have a lot of fiberglass components on the truck. It's much, much lighter than the Stomper truck you drove last year. Yes, it's sure. It, it must be. I know it's 1,000, 1,500 pounds lighter. Uh, we got a fiberglass bed, front end doors, and just numerous parts. We, we, we kept a few steel parts, but not, not a lot. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's like an all-new ball game now uh, with, uh, with the suspension changes and the lightness, and it just drives totally different, but I, I like it. Marvin Smith's wild hair, and another reason he chose this paint job and put it together like that is, you know, talking about Micro Machines getting involved in the sport, actually sponsoring a truck. Well, they intend to make Micro Machine toys in the likeness of a lot of trucks. And Marvin said, hey, I want one that's going to stand out. And certainly, the wild hair is standing out. It is the wild thing right now. Yeah, so all the kids around America, by the end of the year, are going to be able to have their own monster truck circuit and their own play box. And right now, speaking of play boxes, going to be the awesome Marvin Smith in a new truck. He's two-tenths quicker than the Clydesdale, and it's showing. Look at this. Beating by a full length. Marvin Smith, the wild hair, continues to impress with the way he is running in Charleston, West Virginia. He's not backing off one iota. Earlier, he smacked the wall, but he put it back together and has moved into the final four. Wild hair will be coming back against either Mopar Magic or conceivably the Grave Digger. But that's down the road right now. The Outlaw, another truck that is redesigned. Nick Rossi has put a lot into a new truck for Mike Wine. Rossi feels he has the driver from the 90s, Army. Well, a lot of people feel that way. This young man has earned the trust of a lot of people. He'll be driving the new Outlaw Ford. Meanwhile, he sits next to the man that qualified 10th. Now, Dave Wysorek, with the unique driving style, normally does not push his truck to qualify, but he will run you strong in elimination. This is going to happen. No way. The Ford does it. The Outlaw out of Pensacola, New Jersey. Mike Wine wins it for Nick Rossi and puts himself into the final four. So the Outlaw knows he'll be meeting Thunder Chicken in the next round. One more time. It's close, but there's no doubt that Mike Wine and the Outlaw come away with the victory. Army is talking to the brass youngster, Mike Wine. Well, Mike Wine, you got all the Ford people jumping and shouting for you. Yeah, I told them. Last year was my year to learn. This year is my year to produce everything I learned and put it out on the track. The Grave Digger and Mopar Magic. This ought to be a dandy because Mopar has already shown just in our qualifying and in the first round of competition that it's not the Mopar from 89. He too is a much improved truck. But Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger started strong in 89 faded and ended up not finishing in a flurry. Looks like he's got his act together and is ready to come out of the gate strong in 1990. Remember, Anderson with the Grave Digger on the left of your screen runs a rear engine setup. The waist to the rear. New driving tie. He'll go with the jump. Look at this. Bang! Just drives over those cars. Dennis Anderson as the cloud roars for the Grave Digger. Anderson knows he's made it to the 
Final Four in the first event of 1990 on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Wide delighted on the Grave Digger. Yeah, see, the front wheels never bounced up. Oh, that was some beautiful driving there. Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger, Marvin Smith and the Wild Hair, Mike Wine and the Outlaw, Kid Rarig and the Thunder Chicken, they are all still alive. And what a foursome we've got as Anderson waves to the cheering crowd of Charleston. He's planning on coming back. More from West Virginia in just a moment here on Cup Tracks. Welcome back to the Charleston Civic Center on Tough Tracks. I'm Scott Douglas. We are down to the final four. Chris Chapman has those pairings. Monster truck racing certainly has been wild and wooly here at the Charleston Civic Center. Wild here is the culprit responsible for this haul. And let's take a look at some more wild and wooly action as we head into semifinal racing. It's going to be the Thunder Chicken taking on Jersey Outlaw. And then our final pairing is going to be wild here. He will be back and he's going to face another wild one, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. What a pair of matchups coming up. Thunder Chicken going up against the Outlaw. Who do you like, Army? I gotta stay with the Outlaw. He's on a roll. Let's see what can happen. But remember, Luck is always on the side of Rarig and that Thunder Chicken. The winner will make the first Monster Smash Final of 1990. They're at the starting line. The Outlaw Ford, the Thunder Chicken from Pennsylvania. And they're off. Wow, it's too close to call again, Army. Outlaw and Thunder Chicken cross that finish line together. Whoa, my. Army's going to work his way over right now and see if he can get both Kid Rarig and Mike Wine to come over because they don't know yet who has won the race either. Let's see if we can tell off the replay. Here you see him hit the card. Outlaw seems to have a bit of an edge right here, but see, Chicken keeps coming back. Wow, that's close. Well, the first race of the year, <laughs> take off where we left off. It's awfully close right now. We're waiting for the call. Kid Ring, what are you doing in a case like that when it looks so close? I don't know. You look at the camera that uh, shows who won. Do you feel like that you won that race? Yeah, if you look at the play-by-play, -play, you'll probably see my tire went across the finish line first. OK, we're waiting for, OK, come in here, Mike. We're waiting for the time. Fantastic run. Boy, this 1990 looks like it's going to be great. Jersey Outlaw has gone into the final. Thank you. Thank you very much. How did it feel to you out there? It feels fantastic. Get back into the finals. It's been since the middle of last year that we've not had no problems, and the truck's been running fantastic, and I'm pumped up and ready. How about this kid rearing? He's for real, though, isn't he? When you go up against him, you got your hands full. You don't give Thunder Chicken no slack. All night long, we were a tenth of a second apart. Right there, the tenth of a second was just too close to call. Well, the first final of 1990 is going to be coming up in a minute, and you're going to be there. Good luck. Thank you very much. The Jersey Outlaw Ford will meet either the Grave Digger or Wild Hair. What a final we got coming up. But Army, this semifinal ought to be a dandy. You know Dennis Anderson isn't backing off. And Marvin Smith has shown us he is going to step back from nobody in 1990. The Wild Hair has been in all-out attack mode all night. And remember, these were the fast two qualifiers, Wild Hair and Grave Digger. What's interesting is anybody that likes any kind of motorsports, you know what I'm talking about. There's electricity in the air right now. Which one of these guys is going to the final? It's like a sprint car backing into a corner, like a motorcycle on a power slide. Here we go. Oh, Grave Digger. Boy, the drama in this building in the first final of 90 is set up, Scott. It's so interesting, Army, at the late stages of last year, you talked with Dennis Anderson, you talked with Mike Wine, they both talked a big game, said in 1990, I'm going to be tough. They were both saying that. Well, obviously, they started out backing it up in 90. Here's Army with the one and only grave digger, Dennis Anderson. Army, he's all ears. Let's see what he's got to say. Well, the first final of 1990 is coming your way in just a minute. It's going to be a fourth. Jersey Outlaw going against the grave digger of Dennis Anderson. You said you were going to be here. Now can you win it? Yeah, I think so, Army. I don't know. I went up, pulled up here and got ready to stop. Felt like I lost my forward gear. I don't know. I'll find out when I get back in the truck. But if not, I think I've got this race sewed up. The grave digger will now get ready for the monster smash as the crew goes to work on Dennis Anderson's classic machine. It's Digger and Outlaw in what ought to be a classic finals coming up in the monster smash. 
Birmingham, Alabama was the site for other GMT monster truck action this opening weekend of 1990. You see some of the great action that they enjoyed in Birmingham as far as motorcycle jumps go, but they really came to see the monsters in action. In the semifinals, Mad Dog squaring off against defending world champion Equalizer, and the Mad Dog put him away. Big win for Bobby Breen taking over the ride in the Mad Dog. The other semifinal, King Crunch, and look who's back, Army. Awesome car. Two of the toughest Texans in the world. Both of them in monster trucks. It's awesome call. Picks up or he left off with a win. And in the finals, Kong and Mad Dog, Steve Kane against Bob Breen, and awesome Kong says, I am back and cranking on TNT's Monster Truck Challenge. Like riding a bicycle, once you know how to win, you can do it in the awesome Kong. Don't go away! It is time for the monster smash between Grave Digger and Jersey Outlaw. This has become an outstanding rivalry between two colorful, outspoken drivers. Here's Chris Chapman with Mike Wine, driver of the Outlaw. Is there a problem, Mike? No, just checking a power steering box and all. Fluids low on it again. It bounced kind of hard that time. It's going to be you and Dennis Anderson in the finals. What's it going to be? Tell me who's going to win it. Last year, we got together as me and Digger in the finals, and Digger got me, and I know what I did wrong, so I'm going to use it this year and start the year off right. I'm predicting me. The last time the Outlaw and the Grave Digger got together, the drivers kind of ran into each other before the race. Let's look back. Here's what they had to say then, Digger. Well, the final race of the year is not going to cut slack for anybody. Standing with me right now, the lone hope for the Ford cans, Mike Wine. You say you're going to hammer all these Chevrolets on the final race with a Ford. I don't know if they're believing that or not. Yeah, waited all of them to beat their trucks last night. Gravedigger beat his first and tore it up, so like, I think he was afraid to run me in the first round last night. Oh, wait a minute here. So, Dennis Anderson with the Gravedigger. Go hold ahead. Hold on a minute. No way. There's not gonna, Ford's not going to dominate tonight. It's going to be a shovel and it's going to be the Gravedigger. Takes 10 Chevrolets to even touch one Ford. He'll have his chance. We'll be coming up next round. Instead of running his mouth, let him run his truck. Brave Digger and the Outlaw, Dennis Anderson and Mike Wine. It's time for the first Monster Smash of 1990. He picked up the extra point in qualifying. Jersey Outlaw third, Mad Dog is fourth. Equalizer starts out at number five. Then it's King Crunch, Thunder Chicken, Clyde Sale, Jesse Berge and playing for Keith, tied with the Mopar Magic ride of Gary Wiggins. So the points coming out of the chute, you see how they're developing. And next week, it'll be race number two on the circuit. But right now, Dennis Anderson's got himself a win. Well, Dennis, the flag goes to you. First one in 1990, that was some kind of final. Yeah, it was. You know, I started out the, the break season last year just like this. I just hope I can continue this year because I started out strong at the beginning of the season last year and it started dying off for me, but maybe I, maybe I can start off good and, and stay, you know, stay the top 10 you know, or the top, top number one anyway. The most popular monster truck in the sport today. Legions of fans all over the country and they got what they wanted in round number one of 1990. Next week, Digger's back in Charleston, and it's bump and run with the wild hair. Then, Digger in a horse race with the Pony Express. Wild action coming your way from Charleston, West Virginia. Next week, right here on Tough Tracks. 